Support for Louisiana, the state we're in, is provided by... Every day, I go to work for Entergy. I know customers are counting on me. So Entergy is investing millions of dollars to keep the lights on and installing new technology to prevent outages before they happen. Together. 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 We power life. Additional support provided by the Fred B. and Ruth B. Ziegler Foundation and the Ziegler Art Museum located in Jennings City Hall. The museum focuses on emerging Louisiana artists and is an historical and cultural center for Southwest Louisiana. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting with support from viewers like you. Only two milligrams of fentanyl can kill you. The effort to stop the fentanyl scourge. Chances are this will not uh, become the law of the land. The backlash against Biden's student loan forgiveness plan. Where your priorities lie. And for me, that's academics. Meet Louisiana young hero, Cadence Bradford. Oh, oh we're going here. to Dallas. Okay. LSU's women way ahead of schedule and in the final four. Hello, everybody. We begin tonight in the aftermath of another school shooting. This at a small private Christian school in Nashville, Tennessee. Three nine-year-olds and three adults, including the school's headmaster and Baton Rouge native, Dr. Katherine Kuntz, all killed by a former student loaded up with assault rifles and weapons. Dr. Kuntz went to University Lab School in Baton Rouge and LSU before transferring to Vanderbilt. Several friends say they had no doubt Kuntz confronted the shooter. The 28-year-old assailant opened fire just after 10 a.m. Monday inside Nashville's Covenant School, where children aged pre-K through sixth grade had just begun their final full week of classes before Easter break. Alarmingly, this same week, a student in Shreveport was arrested after sheriff's detectives say he tried to carry a loaded handgun into Southwood High School. He had argued with a coach about vaping on campus, and detectives say threatened to kill the coach. He was found in the school parking lot about to re-enter the school when he was stopped and taken into custody. On him, a fully loaded 9mm handgun. And now here are some of the other headlines from around the state of Louisiana. Four parishes in Louisiana ranked in the top 10 counties in the U.S. experiencing population loss between 2021 and 2022, according to new census estimates. The study was limited to parishes and counties with a population greater than 20,000. St. John the Baptist Parish ranked second, Terrebonne Parish ranked third, Plaquemines fourth, and St. Charles eighth. All four Louisiana parishes were severely damaged by Hurricane Ida in August of 2021. The men's basketball program at Southern University welcomed Kevin Johnson as the team's new head coach. Johnson is replacing Sean Woods, who was fired this March after compiling a 64-81 overall record over five seasons. Johnson will be the 15th head coach in the team's history after a decades-long coaching career at Tulane, Louisiana Lafayette, Nickel State, and Centenary College. Governor John Bell Edwards announced last week that more than 100 abandoned oil wells in Louisiana have been plugged during the last two months. There are more than 4,500 abandoned wells across the state, with 70% of abandoned wells located in northern Louisiana. The sites can leak cancer-causing chemicals and cause environmental damage to the area. They also can emit methane, which is 80 times as potent as carbon dioxide. There are an estimated 2 million unplugged wells across the country, a problem the Biden administration's bipartisan infrastructure bill plans to tackle. Louisiana received $25 million in initial federal grant funds to begin the process. Two officers from the Baton Rouge Police Department were killed in a helicopter crash early Sunday. Sergeant David Poirier was 47 years old and a 17-year BRPD veteran and corporal. Scotty Kenzaro was 38 years old and a 16-year BRPD veteran, according to BRPD news releases. The helicopter crashed around 2.30 a.m. while assisting with a vehicle pursuit. Federal officials say the tail rotor of the helicopter hit a tree, causing it to fall into a field near West Baton Rouge Parish.
East Baton Rouge Parish Coroner Dr. Bo Clark says we are in the era of fentanyl, which has been in that era for the past decade, he says. In 2017, there were fewer than 200 fentanyl-related deaths in drugs statewide. To 2021, that number rose to 1,000. Those numbers from the state health department. Now, in 2022, legislature had Millie's Law, and they cracked down harder on the distribution of fentanyl in 2022. Prison time, five to 40 years. State Representative John Stefanski from Crowley is here now with us, and you have something, a pre-filed bill, in fact, that is much tougher. Tell us about that. Yeah, so, you know, one of the constant themes as I've kind of traveled around Louisiana, talked to constituents and business owners and really, really everyone, it's fentanyl continues to come up. And uh, also talked to a lot of family members who have lost loved ones due to the fentanyl crisis. And, and you know, as a policymaker, as a legislator, we try to look for solutions. Mm -hmm. And uh, ultimately, I looked at um, a way to really run it out of the state. And uh, I modeled what we're trying to do off of uh, heroin. So years ago, uh, the law of distribution with heroin in Louisiana was life imprisonment. And when you talk to law enforcement, it really did almost run it out of the state other than a, a few pockets. And so what I've done is I've pre-filed a bill that would make it life imprisonment if you, distrib if you distribute fentanyl or car fentanyl or if you manufacture it, uh, as long as you have in aggregate large uh, 28 grams right and 28 grams you know as I look through the criminal code 28 grams usually is that level for the highest penalty and so th there was some similarity there I talked with uh, some district attorneys some sheriffs about that amount it seemed to be a pretty good level to set that at and and again our, our hope is that uh, it'll run it out of the state with the fear that if you deal this uh, you can go to jail for the rest of your life so you pre-file this mm -hmm. and when you do that you go around talking to different people to see what kind of support you would get what kind of support do you feel you get on this? Yeah, I mean, look, the reception has been very positive. You know, even even with a lot of uh, people that ordinarily are not for increased penalties on crimes, you know, just in general, uh, I've seen a lot of support for this. And, and look, it's, it's because fentanyl is so deadly. It, it's killing you know, hundreds of our citizens. Uh, it, it is a drug that oftentimes I believe the user has no idea they're taking. Mm -hmm. And and ultimately a tiny amount can lead to death. Only two milligrams of fentanyl can kill you. And this so man it, from Georgia, of course. Yeah. It was in his system along with cocaine and alcohol found wrapped in a blanket far from where he was supposed to have been. Uh, but just another tragedy. Yeah, horrible situation. And, and look, uh, r regardless of the intent from the from the person that ends up dying, uh, it's it's just something that's incredibly deadly in our in Louisiana that we have to get rid of. And I, I think, look, it's going to take a multitude of efforts to try to do that. It's going to take a lot of education, education in the form of understanding that any illegal substance that you ingest right. on the market today could kill you because fentanyl could be laced in there. Exactly. There is a, an explosion nationwide right now, different places, Santa Barbara, uh, big wave of this, big bust of this. And in these busts, I find that there always seem to be AK-47s found with this. So I asked the question, would fentanyl, if it were a weapon, would it be an AK-47 uh, or an automatic rifle of some type? Yeah, it would be something that has the propensity to cause, uh, you know, mass damage. You know, if it's been it's been a, it's been likened to a, a weapon of mass destruction. Mm. I, I would call it a bomb, really, wow. because it, if it infiltrates a community uh, and gets into the drug supply, it can kill hundreds of people. And just in just last week, there was a bust in uh, what was it in in around the St. Landry area where they found pounds of fentanyl. And I mean, it, that had the ability, uh, according to the statistics, to kill over a million people. Uh, it, it's, it's incredibly deadly. It's the leading killer now for uh, people 18 to 45, which right. is just Astounding, unbelievable. Astounding, isn't it? It's, it's just amazing. It's, it's unbelievable. And, and look, as a society, we have to decide w when enough is enough. And, and in my opinion, the penalty is warranted. Uh, we need to send a message loud and clear to those who are dealing this. Because if you're dealing fentanyl mm -hmm. here in Louisiana, mm -hmm. you intend to kill people. Sure. It's that simple to me. Sure. Now, you have some other bills that you're going to get in, as a matter of fact, uh, just under the wire because the legislature will begin on the 10th of April. Yeah, so I actually had to take yesterday morning off and just solely work on legislation and, and I should be filing the, the rest of my bills uh, shortly this afternoon. We're actually working on some civil 
remedies for fentanyl and okay. those who are dealing it. Are they fentanyl related? They are. One of them is. And, and look, what, what I'm seeing is that, and the statistics are there to back it up. It's not just talk. You know, we, fentanyl's coming over from China through yeah. Mexico into our country, and right. it's killing our citizens. It and is. so as a country and as a state, we, you know, we have to address that as well. And, and obviously, look, I think the federal government's going to have to take some, some harder stances on that, but I'm going to look at a way to attack it from the state level as well and from a civil level to where we could potentially hold some people accountable for, for allowing this to come in to the state. Well, it sounds powerful what you're doing, and it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Thanks so much for being here to Absolutely. talk with us about it. Happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. <music> Student loan forgiveness is once again on the political agenda. A $400 billion plan created by the Biden administration is now subject to congressional review, opening the door to criticism and a possible block by the GOP. Senator Bill Cassidy is one of the most prominent opposers to Biden's plan and says he intends to fight it with a new resolution. Political analyst Jim Inkster spoke with Kara St. Cyr about it. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us, Jim. So we're here to talk about the $400 billion plan that the Biden administration put forward for student loan forgiveness. So the Congressional Budget Office said that it's gonna be expensive. And of course, it's facing some criticism now, and some of it is coming from Louisiana lawmakers. Bill Cassidy is actually going to the legislative well and trying to stop it that way. It's before the Supreme Court. Chances are this will not uh, become the law of the land. And the president was trying to do it unilaterally, which some people would take offense with, even if they agreed with him. But truth is, $400 billion is just uh, a small portion of the $1.8 trillion that people have in student debt in our country. In fact, student debt exceeds credit card debt by about a half a trillion dollars. So a lot of people have debt, and this would have helped those with incomes under $125,000, $20,000 up to $20,000 of their debt. And uh, Bill Cassidy says it's not a good idea, it's unfair to those who paid their debt, and it's unfair to those who didn't go to college. And so we have a stalemate. Republicans control the uh, U.S. House now, so it may pass their Cassidy's resolution, but likely to fail in the Senate. And also the president, I'm sure, would pull out his veto pen. And the Supreme Court, which is largely conservative now, seems unlikely to go along with it either. So it looks like each side may be scoring some political points, but in reality, I don't think either is on a good course at this point. So let's go back to the criticism. Bill Cassidy says that it's unfair. How is it unfair? He believes that some people didn't go to college and shouldn't have to pay the freight for those who did. And as we know, having a college degree is a great benefit already. And then, of course, there are some people, like probably Dr. Cassidy, yours truly, who paid off student loans. But student uh, college was a lot less expensive in those days. And those who are pointing fingers at Dr. Cassidy say, why would a man who has worked uh, for the public and been paid by the taxpayers at Earl K. Long and in the U.S. Senate and in the U.S. House and in the state legislature, why would he be the one leading the charge? But uh, I think he sincerely believes he's on the right course and he's got a, a long way to go to get this where he wants it to go and the president does as well. So at this point it looks like this is dead on arrival unless something unusual happens in the next few weeks or months. What would be something unusual? Well it would be if some people got a, con a conversion and went along with Dr. Cassidy but then uh, President Biden would likely veto it. So. I would say the odds of him succeeding are lower than the president because the U.S. Supreme Court might surprise people. If he could snag five of nine Supreme Court justices, he could get it done that way. And right now this case is before the highest court in the land, but as we know, seven of the justices were nominated by Republican presidents who probably are not in the same thinking mode as President Biden. So what's our timeline here about how long until we know for sure whether Cassidy could be successful or, you know, what the Supreme mm -hmm. Court's decision will be? The, the Supreme Court will rule, I'm sure, by June, and, and Senator Cassidy, will know, he'll know within the next month or two whether, whether this happens or maybe sooner. So we'll know sometime in the next few months uh, where this is, but the argument will not go away no matter what, and this has all kinds of layers of thought, including presidential powers, which goes beyond whether or not it's a good idea to relieve student loan debt. 
Right, so I'm pretty sure that you're right. We will be seeing this for a long time, no matter what the decision is at the end of the day. And surprisingly, even with top 650,000 people in Louisiana would benefit from this. So uh, some are saying this is political for the president, who's up for re-election next year, because nationally, 43 million people would benefit from it, and most people don't like it when something that might be coming their way is not going to happen. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us and talking about this. Thank you, Kara. LSU is playing its final four game with Virginia Tech right now. It began about an hour ago. No one questioned that when Kim Mulkey became LSU's head coach last year, she would build a winner. But the speed at which it's happening is staggering. She has a record so far going into this game, winning 58 of 66 games with a final four this year in the second year of a major rebuilding job. Well, the past few days in Dallas have been magical for the team and the many fans who have followed them there. The L Club and LSU alumni hosted a Tiger Nation pep rally last night. Back on Tuesday, the team left for Dallas and fans gathered for a send-off party in front of the Maravich Center. Here's a look at that. The Tigers gave their fans the chance to send them off, like they have several times this year. But this one, this time, they're headed to the final four. Let's go, Tigers. You are? Cindy Burge from Eunice, Louisiana. Betty McClellan, Gonzalez. I see you've got your front row seat yep. for this yes. event today. Yes. Think about it, final four. Unbelievable, absolutely. Un it's just so unbelievable, and in her second year here with a new team practically, Alexis being the only returning starter, that, that just adds layers to it. What about the amount of fans that have come to games this year? Oh, Huge amount, record oh, right. the enthusiasm. More than 15,000 for the whiteout against Tennessee. For coach, for steal the score. Almost 16,000 on senior night against Mississippi State. When you come to a game, it's electrifying. It's just awesome. The atmosphere is just awesome. You know, it's good for the state. It's good for the university. It's good for the girls. It's good for girls, period. It's good for <laughs> women's sports. It's good for women's sports. Yes. yes. And the, the student section has been phenomenal. Yes, they have really Absolutely. stepped up. They have really stepped up. Go Tigers! This pair doesn't have tickets. Oh, oh we're going to, oh, yeah. we're going to Dallas. We're going to Dallas. What about what's going to happen there? Well, we pray in that ticket prices drop so we can get tickets. <laughs> we're going blind. We don't have tickets, but we're going. Uh, we're going to go to the LSU tailgate party at the team hotel. I have no idea where it is, but we'll find it. And we're hoping there's a watch party. If not, we'll create our own. Yeah. It's pretty darn good. <laughs> and we huh? just want the girls to play hungry and stay hungry. That's right. Defend right. and defeat. I know all the girls are going to give it their best. We need Lex Luthor to show up like she did this past weekend and bring them through because she can do it. Alexis can pull them through. They do yes. have different ones who rise to the occasion. Yes. 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 I mean, yes. Deja, Ladeja, Williams, Samaya Smith, Blanche, Kateri, Jasmine, Jasmine, Poa. We have the team. Yes. We just, you know, we need all we need it all there this weekend. I'm listening to the knowledge that you guys have about <laughs> this team and about what's going on. It's we've remarkable. Been, we've huh? been here for every game. Thank you, Tiger Nation. Uh, it's been a great seeing you here, and uh, I just appreciate y'all for all the love and support, and it's just been great. I think when I just reflect a little bit, this is ridiculous. This is crazy. Um, this is so fast. These moments. Many coaches coach a lifetime and never get to experience. I have been blessed. How does it happen? It happens because of coaching staffs. I've said it a million times. I can't thank Coach Malky enough for bringing me home. When I think about next year, 
Yeah, we're already saving money for next year. <laughs> all right. For the final four next year. Hey, thank you all thank so much. Thank you. Go Tigers! Go Tigers! We had our last practice in the PMAC this morning. This will be our last pep rally, unless we bring home a championship. Go Tigers! Tonight, we meet the first of LPB's six 2023 Louisiana Young Heroes. Cadence Bradford has beaten the odds since day one. She was born premature, developed asthma, and diagnosed with ADHD. But she's never let that stop her. She's got a 4.42 GPA and is on track to be a pediatric orthopedic surgeon. Let's meet this week's Louisiana Young Hero. You only have so much time in a classroom. These are precious moments you can't afford to miss. Paying attention is paramount, but it's also a luxury Cadence Bradford didn't have. Think about your mind going like 100 million miles per second, and so you're like, oh, look at this, look at this, look at that. Oh crap, I may want to look and sit, figure out how to spell a word. It was very challenging because you're feeling yourself being pulled in this direction, this direction, while all having something in front of you. Wow, so I mean, that must have been really difficult, especially, you know, at, a, at a, such a young age. Yeah. You said it was first grade? Yes, it was in the first grade. Cadence was diagnosed with ADHD when she was six, joining the more than six million other kids with this disorder. The acronym means Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, and the symptoms are exactly what you might think. Not being able to focus, frequent outbursts of energy, and fidgeting. Well, at all, I didn't notice it at all. To me, it was just her. She, she liked to play around. She liked to run around. She liked to, she liked to cartwheel. She liked to jump up in the middle of Walmart and start singing My Country Tears of E and get round in applause. That was just her personality. Well, how'd you find out? Um, the first, well, I found out from her first grade teacher, Miss Warren. She pulled me on the side. She said, don't, don't, don't freak out because a lot of parents freak out when they hear this. My son has it, so um, I think you should get her checked. Um, the reason I finally decided to say something to you is because Kate sat down on the floor and scooted from one side of the room to the other side of the room on her butt. <laughs> it was the butt scoop. <laughs> it was the butt scoop. She was like, that was the final thing that lets me know that. That diagnosis didn't hold Cadence back. She found the right treatment. She went from a BC student to straight A's. She's able to maintain so well, she's an active member of five different academic and social extracurriculars. She's a student council vice president at Liberty High School. She's president of the Key Club. She's a junior representative for the National Honor Society, head ambassador for student ambassadors, and a biomedical chair of the Pink Week Committee. She led a week-long effort to bring awareness to breast cancer. And we wanted to raise the money because wearing pink is great to bring awareness, but to bring actual change, you need action. So we did a pink run where we ran around the school. The teachers had on tutus, even the, the male teachers, hilarious to watch. <laughs> but we also had different sponsorships, including Trader Joe's. She ended up raising $2,000 through her efforts. Miss Devitt, she's an English teacher who is of a survivor of breast cancer. And she almost cried at the end because she was like, you know, it's amazing to see just the younger generation actually trying to bring change. This is only the tip of the iceberg for Cadence. Did I mention she's also a student athlete? A volleyball player, to be specific. My mom suggested volleyball because that was her, her, her love. That was what she loved. So she was like, okay, just try it. And it was that first ball when I passed it. I mean, it was a pretty, well, looking back, it was a pretty, it was a pretty ugly pass. But that feeling I had when I just finally got the ball up, I was like, yes. So just having that connection was actually when I was in the sixth grade. So after that, I was just full blown volleyball. How do you manage your schedule? So my schedule, it's been a work in progress as in I've learned from my failures and learned sometimes you're gonna have to say no because you have to prioritize where your, uh, where your priorities lie. And for me, that's academics. No matter what, no matter what I'm in, my academics will always come first. Cadence plans to start college on the pre-med track. Her goal is to become a pediatric orthopedic doctor. She sent out several feelers for schools, and she's certainly got the drive for it. Cadence has accomplished a lot. 
more than most kids her age. But of everything she's done and everything she will do, her mother says she's most proud of who her daughter's become. I'm actually proud of her personality. You know, education is good. You know, her intelligence is good. But it's her personality and her, um, her giving nature. Like I say, everybody loves her. Everybody that comes in contact loves her. Everywhere we go, she has overcame so much tell. Uh, it's amazing. We, we can't even go into all the details of what she has overcome, the things that she has saw. They, uh, they like to call her the Southern University student, uh, extra student, because she literally was on campus with me all her life. I just can't stop talking about this little girl. I'm just so, so proud of her. What an inspiring story from her. And everyone, that is our show for this week. Remember, you can watch anything LPB anytime, wherever you are, with our LPB PBS app. You can catch LPB news and public affairs shows, as well as other Louisiana programs that you've come to enjoy over the years. And please like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For everyone here at Louisiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Andre Morrow. Until next time, that's the state we're in. Every day, I go to work for Entergy. I know customers are counting on me. So Entergy is investing millions of dollars to keep the lights on and installing new technology to prevent outages before they happen. Together. 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 We power life. Additional support provided by the Fred B. and Ruth B. Ziegler Foundation and the Ziegler Art Museum located in Jennings City Hall. The museum focuses on emerging Louisiana artists and is an historical and cultural center for Southwest Louisiana. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting with support from viewers like you.